And financial stability is all over the news these days, and there is no better time to educate children how to be financially successful. Coming up on our show, we're going to sit down with an author who took the tale of the tortoise and the hare and used it to get kids to better understand the basics of finances. Well, coming up a little bit later on in the show, we're going to sit down with the author of a new book using the tortoise and hare story to teach children financial literacy. All right, the tortoise, the hare, and Warren Buffett, all three together to teach children financial literacy. That's coming up next when Sacramento Company returns. All right, teaching kids financial responsibility becomes more and more important these days, and our next guest took the classic tale of the tortoise and the hare, combined it with Warren Buffett to teach kids how to start making the right financial choices, and we want to welcome author Lucas Rumerswall. Welcome to Sacramento and Company. Thank you. What a fun idea. What got you started as an author of a financial literacy book for children? It's the same desire to see change. You know, Martin Luther King, he wanted civil rights changed. We want to see dignity taught in schools to kids. We want to see silver rights being the issue. Is I think, you know, these kids at UC Davis, they were so passive. I'm active. I've got this huge team of giants all around me, these experts, artists, design layout people, professors all over the world are helping me. People are starting to translate. We've got a mission to translate this book into 100 languages, and we're going to do that before 2013. Nice. And how does Warren Buffett tie into all of this? Well, look, I asked myself a question 15 years ago. Look, if I could ask anyone for financial advice, who could I ask? Look, one man made it yes. on my list. <laughs> of course. Warren Buffett. Okay, and so I just was so inspired. I just went to every library I could and found every book I could on Warren Buffett. And I, I, I'm sure I got the best collection of books on Buffett in New Zealand and down under. I bet you do. And uh, I've read every shareholder's letter uh, that he's ever written. And I just went, now what, what can I teach the kids? Sure, now if kids, if they hear the word financial literacy, they might think, oh gosh, that's gonna be boring. What would excite kids about this book? Well, the thing that's gonna excite them is the iPad. Oh, because, there you go. Because this is the, the future today. Um, we've already got a school in New Zealand, Ariwa College. To turn up at school, you've got to bring your iPad. Oh, neat. And, and, and what I've discovered most of all is that kids, this is the way they want it taught. I took, I took books into a pre-K and my iPad, and I asked the kids, well, should I just read it out loud? And the kids all said, no, no, we want to hear the iPad. Oh, my gosh. And the iPad does read it out loud. Oh, neat. So, uh, and it, how you can color it in yourself, you can record your own voice on top. It's just so much fun. What a great idea. Yeah. What is the message you really want kids to understand? Fundamentally is that passion. Passion, that's where profits come. If you want to be the best you can be, to be the best you can be, it's about passion. And people, they look at Warren Buffett and they see stocks and bonds. When I look at Warren Buffett, I just see pure passion. I see a boy sitting in a sand pit with all his friends, having the most fun in his life that he's ever had. And so that six-year-old boy that started out with this mission to become a millionaire and a billionaire, he's just playing in a sand pit, having a lot of fun with all his friends. And that's what I see is passion. Yeah, and his story is really inspirational, too. He talks about how he started off with Coca-Cola, and I see you're wearing a Coca-Cola pen there, and how he bought a, a six-pack for like 25 cents and sold them for five cents a can and made a five-cent, you know, investment right there. He made a profit, yeah. He knew how to turn a profit. He knew not to overcharge anyone, just to make a very moderate profit. And you don't attract 40-odd billion to yourself unless you're doing something a little bit different. And that's what I teach the kids. I said, I asked them, look, I've just done a seven city tour, African American kids, low income kids, and the kids just love it. And I asked the kids, well, what is it that's different about a billionaire from you? Because they've never heard of Warren Buffett. Yeah. And they finally click, and it's the top two inches, it's the thinking. They think different. And so I teach the thinking habits, the mental habits that billionaires have. Nice. Now you talk about talking to kids, but you also need to talk to parents because parents need to have a hand in having their kids be financially responsibly too. What would you tell parents they can do? 
Get an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Get because, an iPad and read this book. Be because it is so much more fun, you know, and that's where I saw, um, my daughter was five at the time, I downloaded some books on my smartphone, my iPhone, I gave it to her. The next morning she woke up and said, Dad, where's your iPhone? Have you downloaded, you know, the, the A to Z of 13 Habits yet? You know, she wanted that next book on the smartphone and I saw addiction there. And I went, aha, books are dead. And we saw borders imploded, just yeah. sucked out. Look, books, it's history. Is these smartphones. And I mean, what's Coca-Cola about? Coca-Cola is about cost per serving and having fun. And what I'm about is having fun and reducing the cost per serving so low that anyone can access these books Definitely. And, and it is fun still. I still like books, though. I still do, Lucas. I like to buy a good book, but I do read them. I've got my Kindle and my iPad and all that. What's the reaction of kids when they read the book? They all want the A to Z of 13 Habits. <laughs> they love that book. And um, the real, the most fun is, and which I never, ever expected, I, I took six books, six ideas into middle school, and the middle school kids all wanted the tortoise under here. Yeah, it it surprised me. Yeah. It was not what I expected. And anyway, but I can take that into pre-K. And a, a girl who's, ne who's quiet as a church mouse, who never speaks normally, she stood up and she said, I know this story. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. This is a four-year-old girl. And so what's the real magic of the tortoise of the hare is that kids already know the story and we're just filtering the habits of billionaires into the story. And so they don't even know that they're learning how to read on the iPad, they're having fun with the iPad. And whilst they're having fun, financial literacy, you know, it's the spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Yes. So we're just having fun. And that's all I'm doing is having fun. Lucas, thank you so much. I know we can find your book on the iPad. We can find it on the stores. We really appreciate you being here today and sharing this. And we hope our kids can learn from that. And we appreciate everyone else being here with us today. We'll be back tomorrow with a great show for you. So we hope to see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. This is great. Today's segment's paid for by... Furnishings provided by IKEA. Kitchen set provided by Kitchen Mart. Jody's wardrobe provided by Swack at the Fountain. Flowers provided by Proceda Florence.